Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video. So two relatively big things to talk about here. This Jeremy Zuckerman post suggesting something about the Avatar soundtrack. And then, very interestingly, we have first footage from the early access for Avatar Generations, the upcoming Avatar mobile game. So there's a lot to discuss with this, which we'll get to second after we go through this. So yeah, Jeremy Zuckerman posted this on his Instagram story. Just this picture, nothing else to go along with it, but um, it's clearly suggesting and progress being made towards the ATLA soundtrack. Now, I think first things first, we probably have to address, is this Netflix related? Is this related to the live action show? My, my impression on that is that no, it's not. Because Jeremy Zuckerman was attached to the Netflix show early on while Mike and Brian were still attached. If you, if you hear him talk in interviews, he is very much that like, you know, he is close friends with Mike and Brian. He goes where they goes. There's that trust between the two of them. And because they're no longer attached to the Netflix show, I'm assuming Jeremy Zuckerman is no longer attached. Um, I don't, I forget when he has and hasn't said anything about it, but I'm pretty sure he's not really involved in that show anymore. So that leaves this to be something related to ATLA, the show. The older show from 2005 to 2008. And so let's look at what it says here. ATLA book one OST. Exactly what we're looking for. Um, 01 ATLA premiere main title, Jeremy uh, yeah, Jeremy Zuckerman, um, and then what's that? Orchestrated by Brian C. Harold. And then concert score is what it says up in the corner as well. So, what's going on here? Um, obviously, the impression you would get here is that this is probably ahead of going into some sort of a re recording of the ATLA soundtrack. Because he has said in past interviews from like years ago that if the soundtrack was to ever happen, he would want to redo the ATLA soundtrack because like especially the early stuff uh, is not in good file formats, the quality isn't great, and he wouldn't want to release it in that state. So straight away, ATLA soundtrack is probably going to be, have to be re-recorded in full. Uh, we don't really know what the situation is with the chorus soundtrack. Obviously, it was recorded in a much more sort of like, I guess, modern kind of era, but is still going on like 10 years old for some of it at this point. So who knows what might happen with that. But either way, ATLA is I thought was the big one that we've never had before ever at all. So there's excitement surrounding this. So what we have here is obviously, I guess, track one. Uh, track 6, Banished, Track 12, Agni Kai, Track 13, Kiyoshi Suite, Track 24, Into the Fire Nation, something or other, 26, Roku Destroys uh, the Temple, we assume. Um, so, uh, obviously, some track listings here, and since it's from book 1, we can be like, okay, Track 6, Banished, is probably from uh, episode uh, 1 or 2. Uh, maybe somewhere in episode 3 if you want to go that far. 12, Agni Kai, has to pretty much be from episode 3, the Zhao Zuko Agni Kai. 13, Kyoshi Suite from The Warriors of Kyoshi, the following episode, episode 4. And then we skip all, all the way ahead to track 24 and 26, which are obviously from uh, 108, Winter Solstice Part 2, Avatar Roku. So 26 tracks for just the first 8 episodes. That would suggest that there's going to be like 50-ish tracks, give or take, who knows how, what exact way it's going to work out, for just book one. So if if this is ahead of the soundtrack release and they're recording it for that, um, it looks like we are getting full, in-depth, they're going all in soundtracks where we're going to get like 100 tracks or something like that. Um, this is exciting. It's very, very exciting um, because some people will say, well, we, we've had the soundtracks for years online, but like er everyone forgets that those soundtracks are put together by fans. Yes, some of those tracks have the right title because they were ultimately taken from the track teams like a MySpace account back in the day. But most of those are just sort of kind of ripped out of the show itself the episodes and given some sort of a fan title that relates to what's going on we don't really have official titles for most of the tracks in atla that's the that's the real thing about this is that we we 
we've lost track in so many ways of what is and isn't official music from that soundtrack release. There's a reason the official Avatar channel was planning to release that a few years ago, but then it got stopped effectively by Jeremy Zuckerman because it, it's not all his and he doesn't want to release it unless it's good. This looks like they're going in for some sort of a like live orchestra concert style recording type situation, which I guess would match the way they did the finale of ATLA where they had the, the full orchestra and he's talked about how incredible that was. And I guess Avatar is in such a popular state that they're going all in on the soundtrack which they know will do well. So I think this is very positive and this combined with the recent interview from Jeremy Zuckerman where he mentioned that this is the best it's ever looked. Mike and Brian all but confirmed the soundtrack is going to happen eventually. This feels like progress being made and we have something to go off with it. Now we just have to wait and see the follow-up and see like official announcements be made. So very positive on this and hopefully this means we'll see ATLA and Chorus soundtracks soon-ish. Um, now we move on to Avatar Generations. So um, some screenshots came out about this a while ago. There were sort of leaked screenshots, so I didn't post about them because one, there wasn't too much details about it, but now we actually have video from the game. So there are three videos I have here. Uh, thanks to Kynorian for uh, letting me know about these. Um, the first one, we're going to mainly focus on the idea that like it's the intro to everything and then the other two will have just stuff that this video doesn't have. So all these will be below if you want to watch them in full. I'm going to have the sound off so we can just focus on, on little bits and pieces and we'll go through this and analyze some of it. So straight away, title screen, very nice. Avatar Generations, four elements logo, touch to start. And then of course we have Team Avatar full team avatar including Suki which is fantastic so we've got the whole crew here and um, interesting that the designs that they're using is like it's obviously basically book three Zuko like for because that's what he's like when he's in team avatar uh, Suki in full Kyoshi warrior uh, outfit and then it's like book one Sokka Aang and Katara so they're obviously going for like what they consider to sort of be the the typical most known or like hero outfits for the characters even though they're probably not the fan favorite outfits for them. I think most fans probably will be like just give us book three Katara, book three Aang and uh, book three Sokka. Um, everyone else is fine and I like that Momo and Appa are there as well. So from here we get a pretty nice animated intro as we jump in here. So showing you that the production level on this seems quite good. So here's the animation, uh, Korra, Kiyoshi, Roku, and Aang. Some new animation definitely there for sure. And then look at this. This is so cool. Brand new sort of like um, intro style thing. So we had this style of intro for ATLA. We had this style intro for Korra, and we're also getting it for this game basically avatar generations and the whole idea about that is past avatars that seems to be one of the themes of this game is that it's really going to play on the idea of all these avatars and what's going on here so you can see right there up front Korra in the avatar state very cool and um, there are with her they basically play every avatar against their main villain except Korra who I guess had so many villains they couldn't just have them all there uh, and so they have her in the avatar state to represent that which is quite cool but you can see there Wan and uh, and uh, Vatu so that's obviously it makes sense for him that was his main kind of enemy Yang Chen and Old Iron very very interesting stuff there uh, very cool in the middle Karuk and uh, Ko that that makes a lot of sense very nice um Sozin and Roku absolutely makes sense for the Roku era and then who's this up top here um Kiyoshi and Janju Janzu whatever way you want to pronounce his name um that has to be him that, that's the only other thing that makes sense because it's clearly not Chin the Conqueror who would be the other character you would maybe think it is but no th this pretty much has to be Janju so uh, very cool first time seeing I suppose official art of this character though what's interesting about this is that it is awfully similar to Kachi95 the the fan artist uh, who, who does lots of art about the novels very similar to their art that they did of Janju to the point where it's like 
it almost feels like a copy. I know they have been acknowledged by um, the official like novel artist as being effectively the source for the design for Rangi, but I guess they're doing the same thing again with Janju here. Um, you can look up some of Kachi 95's art and you can see that this image of Janju is very similar to uh, their art. So uh, I'd like to see Kachi 95 say something about this because um, there, there comes a point, I think, with these type of situations where it's like, it's as like as a fan artist, I guess, like you're just proud that like it's being referenced at all. Your art is being referenced at all in a, an official capacity. But when suddenly, effectively, a fan artist is sort of almost subbing in for free as like the, a character designer for like official art, that feels like it's a fan artist kind of being taken advantage of. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with this situation. Um, I like that we have fan art here but um i hope people are getting credited or or, or more uh if their art is being used so clearly that like it's based off that and um, but yeah very cool stuff here and then of course ang and ozai so very cool stuff here and then we go into the new era stuff but i do want to just say like it's, it's so cool to see that they're referencing basically all of the main past avatars that we know so Ang, Korra, and then the four before Ang are obviously the main avatars that we're familiar with. And then who knows, as the game progresses, we might see them go into Zito and, and stuff as we learn more. Um, and then, yeah, we have some ATLA reference stuff here, Korra stuff here, Rava Vatu. Um, and the narration is actually quite good here if you listen to it. There's the past avatars, that's what they're going for here. Le avatar legacy, avatar generations. Very, very cool. So intro's fine, and then you jump straight into like the tutorial. And interestingly, it's set in like book three. And then they flash back to start the story again. So obviously they want you to have the sort of like the higher powered characters with the cool skills and highlight how you get to this eventually. So you have like a basic attack, you have an advanced attack, and then like you have an ultimate attack, and there are also combo attacks. It seems like a basic mobile game, like RPG kind of turn-based system. Um, it looks fun to a certain degree, but it's not going to blow you away. I think with its gameplay is the, the impression that I get. Again, with um, you know, without going full into the, the RPG stuff, it doesn't really feel like there's that much going on. But as we go through, like, you, there are a lot of items and like boosts and stuff like that that you seem to be able to get behind the scenes. But I think that's just more of the kind of monetization systems in the background that like, oh, you need these training scrolls to boost the power of your characters to progress in the story. And here are these things that will increase their attack and so on. But you can see there, they're like stats and like uh, effects, buffs and debuffs to characters. You know, there's immunity to certain things as well. So it feels like there's a little bit of depth to the RPG system without it being like too crazy ultimately. But, you know, some of the animations seem, like, decent. Again, for a mobile game, like, this seems solid. I know a lot of people are going to rip this apart um, because it's not the Avatar game that we've wanted. But we know there are other Avatar games. Like, I think proper, like, uh, big, bigger scale games coming. But this is likely going to be the first one. And it feels like a, a good attempt. It looks like a reasonable version of one of these games. Sure, it is Avatar being used as the IP for this system um, rather than it feeling like super unique for Avatar but it looks like effort is going into this to make it feel uh, somewhat like you know that like they care like referencing avatars that you maybe wouldn't assume they wouldn't because the, the I think what people might have expected from this is that it's just ATLA they don't touch on anything except that like hey Roku comes into things eventually and then eventually they switch over to Korra and do that stuff but that they never reference Yang Chen or Korok but the fact that they open up straight away with all those past avatars is a really good sign in my opinion and then as you can see here you just kind of go through the story and you can see you know prison camp black sun invasion and um, not protecting them and you can see here he's uh, worried about uh, failing and you know, how will he fight the Fire Lord? And then we flash back to the start of the game here. So one year earlier, I don't know if the timeline is really right there, but roughly, you know, the, the idea is more like nine months, but I guess 
they're, they're the way they're doing it, it, it roughly works. Uh, I don't think we're going to like uh, get too pedantic about that. Um, so you can see here we're in book one and you can see sort of how it works. You get rewards for doing little things on the map. This is just progressing the story until they find Aang. There's some voice acting here. It seems like they have uh, different actors in to do the voice lines here. So that could be a little bit awkward. But overall, you know, like look look at the, the art for the characters. It looks pretty decent in my opinion. And um, here's some of the Zuko and Iroh stuff. You can see the chibi stuff on the kind of map looks actually, I think, quite good. Um, you can see some of the like reward scrolls and stuff you get. So there's a lot of items to help progress the game. And you have like a yin-yang time-based system that you can see, you know, you spend four of that just to do this part of the story. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm guessing because it's just a beta version. That's why it says 250 out of 42. Uh, or I, I'd, or maybe that means something different. Not really sure. So again, this is still like in the tutorial section of the game. As you go through the early episodes, of course, um, there's an example of one like the summoning screens, using different characters. Um, you can see here, that's fine. Penguin sledding. So you can see the events of like the first two episodes basically happening here. Avatar State Ang here. And it gets a little bit more interesting when you get into what happens after this, how they do the 103 stuff, uh, which we'll see here. So you go on the map to the Patola mountain range, which is where the Southern Air Temple is. But you can see here that you start here. So you actually make your way up this section of the mountains and then to the Southern Air Temple. So this game will be adding a little bit more into the story, as we'll see. I don't think there's much in this video of it. Yeah, I think they go from that into just some of the things. So there's the using the training scrolls to level up your characters. Um, ascension items to improve things as well look at all those items um you have like a you know if you log in every day you get items building up to earn yourself an iro there this will earn you uh what a summon at some point launch celebration here um and then yeah here's here's some of the summon uh, banners and what you can get in them so there's some cool references here. Like, look at their Gyatso is pretty nice. Some different versions of the characters. Tyro there. Um, Light of Laogai, Assassin Knife, Southern Night Lantern, Paisho Board. So there's some nice references here with this, these items. Like, there's uh, Unagi, Suki, Zuko with and without helmet, Sokka with face paint, uh, Agni Kai versions of the characters, Dragon Teapot, Ruby Totem, the Sacred Orb from the Great Divide, Ursa's masks, reference to the search. So you can see they're referencing the comics here as well. So that that gives me some hope for this, is that, again, they're not just doing basic ATLA. Look at there, the rare character in this one is the wolf spirit from the Forgetful Valley from the search. That's a nice reference. Snow Leopard Caribou from uh, North and South. Um, different versions of the characters again. There's Jang from um, Guitar and the Pirate Silver is here. Uh, there's Monkey, Sokka in Kyoshi Warrior outfit. So you can see they're really, you know, making some references here. There's more of the animals. Um, Tien Hai's Hope from the Rift. Uh, Shrine of Gyatso. Kyoshi. Yeah, like th there's some nice references here. So that's it for, for uh, that video. So in this one, I just want to show off. Yeah, they get they eventually get to the, the Patola mountain range. And you can see here, this section we never really saw before. This is one of the isolated islands. And you can, again, you can sort of see that the map is sort of detailed. Like this is the most detail I think we have ever seen an avatar map. Um, so let me just get off the screen. Yeah, so, yeah, like in color, all the different sections of the map broken up so you can see it a little bit clearer. Like here's the water tribe. I think I glanced over it there, but like they, they referenced the, the place where they were as being Wolf uh, Cove, as being like Hakoda City um, or whatever. Uh, Patola Mountain Range here, um, which is nice. This is a particular mountain passage. And there's a whole side story here about like, this dojo lower in the mountains where there's these three different factions and you have to get find the three parts of the key to go in and fi face the master and you meet this uh, new character here um, who's named uh, Zin Ming 
which is like a new character design there looks pretty okay even though i don't think there's too much substance to this particular plot here but you can see you just go from icon to icon have a few fights and you eventually build up to um you you go in and you meet the uh, master of the dojo here and you have a boss fight against them so you know pretty simple stuff um and then in this one i just want to show at the very end here the um some of the monetization stuff they show right here at the end of this video um so you can see like up top you have these sort of what they call nature stones you have the yin, yin yang kind of like a time system and um, you have a general currency and then look at here the store uh kyoshi warrior four star six per account 800 of some currency kyoshi upgrade bundle 39 dollars 64 dollars for the hero pack um this stuff is expensive like I, i've played some of these games before never put any money into them and the price of some of these packs is absurd um but you can see here lots and lots of money stuff there so there's one free item there for some gold um obviously to beta test and then the nature stones which you do seem to earn just over like playing the game you can obviously buy them for for money here so if we four thousand of them for 64 Eight thousand for one hundred and twenty-nine. Um, you you could, if you want to, put a lot of money into this game. I don't think you should, but honestly, like I I think just stuff like this intro makes it feel like okay, some effort has gone into this game. The fact that it is more than just a recap of ATLA, even if it's only a little bit more gives me some hope that we could eventually get to a stage where obviously they're going to probably do all of atla book one two and three they might even do a kind of comics recap thing in as story content they'll move on to Korra. they probably will do kiyoshi at some point and have like special kiyoshi events and banners where you can earn all the kiyoshi characters and so i think this is a game to if you're a hardcore avatar fan to keep an eye on if not just for to see the characters and to see new official art for the characters like just the fact like this screen ko karuk yang chen old iron and um, janju kiyoshi all being on the same screen together in an official avatar item is very cool to see and there is potential in this game even if Ultimately, most people are going to dismiss this as the mobile game that they probably don't want to play or will feel like they are forced to play, uh, which is fine. Gameplay wise, obviously, it didn't look like there was a lot going on here, but I don't think it looked like disastrous or like terribly bad. It looks solid in my mind for one of these games. So we'll see what happens. Like I said before, I'm going to play this. I'm not going to put money into it. See how it kind of plays out. Because just as a fan of like lore and stuff like this, there's little bits of new pieces in this that I'm interested to see where they add stuff in or or what. Because like you can imagine getting to certain key parts of the story and they flesh it out a little bit more. That sounds like very cool. Like what if we eventually get like a special thing where they suddenly go more in depth on say like the Roku era. Like they have Roku and Sozin here. So we assume... Obviously, when they get to that stage of the ATLA story, there'll be a little bit of a Roku Sozin thing. But what if they have then a whole side story referencing like the RPG and going more into the Roku Sozin era? And you can get characters like Ryoshan and, and Zaysan as characters you can uh, use in the game. And eventually, like a, a, a while into this, you can have really cool teams where like you've got like Rangi, Yang Chen. Janju, Kavik on your team. That sounds amazing to me that we're mixing eras like that if they allow that. It's obviously still quite early here, but I can see some potential. So um, that's pretty much all I want to say for this video. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on first. The Jeremy Zuckerman post about the soundtrack, I guess, to some degree. What do you think this means? And then Avatar Generations. Um, what are your thoughts on what we see here from this sort of like preview early access content? Um, how, do, how do you feel about this first look at a new Avatar game that's coming out? Um, because uh, it, it sort of surprised me with how like there's actually some interesting stuff to it. 
Um, obviously, links, like I said, to the three videos I showed off here will be in the description if you want to check them out in full. Um, because, like, obviously, I didn't show off any, like, the sound or audio here, so you can watch it, them in full if you want below. But for now, that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.